everyone good afternoon good morning good evening wherever you're joining us from today please use the chat box to ch chat chat uh room to just tell us where you're joining from your name and just say hello to everyone this is empower school of health and IHPHL co-hosted webinar. And we're excited to have you to discuss the topic, the role of data analytics and health in healthcare supply chain management. Hi, Bashir. Hi, Bernard. Richard. Simwaka. Elias. Oliad, Asher. Bonjour, Timmy. Bonjour, bonjour, tout le monde. Bonjour. How are you? It's good to have you here. I'm fine. It's Marius from Great. Congo. Great. Chris Pin, Ahmed, David, blessed. Welcome. We're happy to have you. All right, as we welcome you all, uh, in a couple of few seconds, we'll be beginning the webinar so that we can catch up with time and finish in good time so that we can have question and answers uh, sufficiently attended to. Okay, welcome. Welcome, Golden. Welcome, Dodo. Thank you, Timmy, uh, for your for starting this session. Uh, my name is Sonia, and I'm from Empower School of Health. So since the time has already started, so it's high time to just start the session. And I can see people are still joining us. So I will just briefly um, introduce and uh, tell you all about the topic that we are covering to today. Uh, so the topic is role of data analytics in healthcare supply chain management. And as you can see on the slide, so we have three speakers. Uh, Philip, he is a manager of warehousing Chemonics International in Nigeria. Professor Andy, he's a director of education and capacity building uh, Power School of Health. And Dr. Gladness, she's a uh, senior lecturer, uh, University of Dar es Salaam. And today's moderator is Timmy Omele, uh, Omole. Uh, I'm so sorry if I have... Uh, Miss, uh, <laughs> not taking it okay. correctly. Uh, he's an executive director of IAPHL. So now I would request uh, Timmy to please take it from here. Thank you all. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you very much for building the background. Like uh, she has introduced, this is a webinar on the role of data analytics in healthcare supply chain uh, management. And we have three uh, very experienced speakers to to engage the topic with us and we'll be we'll be happy to have all your questions uh, sent in uh, using the using the chat box uh, to to engage I mean to see how we can return uh, with answers later next slide okay Sonia it's over to you yeah, so I'll just give you all a uh, brief information about Timmy, our moderator for today's session. Uh, he's a uh, he's dynamic and inten uh, intentional in pursuit for excellence. He has an unrelenting passion to enhance access and reach to quality and productive life. He's a pharmacist and supply chain expert with over 10 years of experience strengthening health supply chain system in Nigeria. And as uh, I inform you, he's uh, an active member and now executive director of IEPHL. Um, so over to you, Timmy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. So in the in the next one hour, we'll be engaging the topics in, in this, in the order you are seeing on your screen. We'll have uh, Professor Andy give us a background about Empower School of Health. Then we'll talk about the speakers. Then God gladness would come first, uh, Dr. Gladness will come first, uh, Philip will come next, and Professor Andy will come uh, third with the presentation. After the presentation, Sonia will quickly give us a, a hint into further 
uh, activities that we are doing uh, both at Empower and at IHPHL, then we'll give room for questions and answers. Now, off throughout the presentation so that we can manage the bandwidth effectively and then uh, ensure that we hear each other. Uh, you can use the chat box to continuously engage us with questions, with uh, icon and, and any other comments that you have. Uh, we, we encourage you to participate in two polls that will be sending out in the course of this uh, webinar. Uh, they will run for a few seconds and we we'll encourage you to, to, to participate and give your opinion about some of those questions that we'll be asking. Then for us here, uh, the speakers, the moderators, uh, kindly have your camera on for engagement. Uh, but in the case that your, your network is not as good, please feel free to turn off the camera to improve the connection. Then mute your microphone and let us keep to time. We know that one hour is very short to engage this kind of very important topic, but we'll do what we can to open it up for, for the conversation. Next slide. So after this uh, webinar, we are expected that we should get some things. One of the things that we want to achieve is that we have the roles of data analytics in health supply chain well explained with global uh, perspective and a focus on Africa region. We also see what the use of data is like in the, in the in implementation of logistics rights. We know that we are familiar with the six rights of logistics, but we want to see how we can use data to enhance the implementation of logistics rights. So these are the immediate uh, objectives. Now the polls are on. Uh, kindly, kindly take the time to quickly attend to the poll and let us see how, how we fare in another uh, say 20 to 30 seconds. The poll is on now. Uh, please take the poll. Yes, I can see. I can see some, some answers coming in already. We have about close to 20, more than 20 already. Please keep it coming. Keep it coming. We have close to 50 already. Keep it coming. Yes, thank you, thank you. We're about 100 now. Please keep it coming. Great. So about 70% of us here already are female, I mean, are male. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you from America, from Europe, from Africa, from Middle East, from Asia, Australia and the Pacific. And thank you. Uh, apparently we have the largest percentage from Africa, then followed by Asia. Thank you, Timmy. So this is uh, this uh, you can see the uh, results for uh, poll one. 
we have maximum uh, male uh, audience uh, that is 69 and female is 31. So I think uh, we should now really be focused on female population as well. Uh, so what is the age? The maximum is between 30 to 40. The geographical region, uh, 83 from Africa region. And uh, the academic background, the maximum are from pharmacy diploma, bachelor's degree. Um, then I can see as per the work experience, uh, we have 33% from uh, for, for, for five years experience. And I can see um, how did you hear about us? And that is 60%, 59% from Empower email, 30% uh, from IPHL and from other sources. Thank you all for participating. Now we will stop it and we will move on to other slide. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, everyone, for participating in the poll. Yes, we're happy to hear all the things that you're telling us. So uh, at this point now, I'll quickly I'll, I'll leave the floor for Professor Andy to quickly give us a background of uh, Empower School of Health. Prof, you have the floor. Thank you. Greetings and welcome to all. Just a very short introduction on Empower because we are very tight on time today. So Empower is a global organization. We work across 100 countries in multiple languages. We have three main areas, leadership and change management, digital learning, and public health procurement and supply chain. Digital learning, most of you will be familiar with from the online courses that we run. Next slide, please. We have partnerships all across Africa because our eventual aim is that local educational institutions, national institutions will operate the kind of training that we are now doing. So it will be entirely local content. They will be empowered to deliver training nationally. Next slide, please. We have a completely international faculty with a very wide range of people. We have former president of Ghana. We have supply chain experts. We have educational experts from Europe and across the world, especially from Africa. Next slide, please. Okay, then back to Timmy to go to Gladness. Thank you very much, Prof, uh, for that background. So the first speaker on this webinar today is Dr. Gladness. Ladis Ladislas Salema. She is the senior lecturer at the University of Dar es Salaam Business School. She's a senior lecturer at the university with 17 years of work experience in teaching, research, and consultancy. She is a pro public health logistician with a PhD in logistics and master's degree in public health. She, will, she has been teaching in these areas of operation management and uh, managerial economics and supply chain management. She has also conducted several research in health supply chain. Moreover, Gladness has consulted with both the public sector, private sector, research institutions, such as Research for Poverty Elevation, as well as international organizations such as UNDP, UNFPA, and UNFPA. She was the member of the 2017 Holistic Review of the Health Supply Chain of Tanzania, which has led to the redesign of health commodities of the health commodity supply chain. So this is Dr. Gladness in brief, and she'll be taking us through the next few slides and telling us about uh, supply chain, I mean data analytics and the implication in supply chain. Thank you, Dr. Gladness. It's over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Timmy. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good evening. Uh, greetings from Tanzania. And uh, I'd like to take you through this uh, brief about uh, data analytics in health supply chain. Uh, basically, we tend to understand that uh, uh, in the current uh, uh, situations and the ongoing changes in the health supply chain, we can never ignore uh, the issue of data. But we want to go beyond just collecting data and we want to emphasize on the analytics that making use or bringing out a meaning from the data that we have uh, collected. So we all understand we have a lot of data 
but then we don't see changes. Why? Because we have not yet been able to uh, get meanings out of the uh, the data that we have. So if we refer to Peter Sondergaard and uh, he said information, or we can say data is the oil of the 21st century supply chains, and that does not exclude the whole supply chains. And analytics is the commercial engine. So when we talk about uh, analytics, basically we want to get value out of the data. We want to burn the data. We want to change the data into meaningful uh, uh, knowledge which will help us to manage our supply chains. So ideally, when we talk about analytics is that we have data, we have certain information, but we want to get some energy or some means to move on in our supply chains in, a, in, in an improved manner. And that is the process that we call analytics. Next. So if we understand very well, our supply chains is that the whole supply chains they have uh, uh, in terms of characteristics or features is that uh, uh, the whole supply chain has, uh, uh, is also one of the systems as far as the health systems uh, uh, are concerned. So it's complementing what other health systems are in place. But then we come to realize that when we talk about health supply chains, sometimes we have uh, multiple systems, yeah, multiple systems, and uh, because of the different products that we have, but at the same time, at some point in the health system, we have the clinical systems. So we, we are all talking about the health uh, system, but uh, when we talk about uh, uh, what we have as feeders to this, uh, what is called the health system, there are multiple types of systems. And that is also the same with the health supply chain. Sometimes we have multiple uh, health supply chains. Like sometimes you see one specifically for TB products, one specifically for vaccines, and uh, one for essential medicines. And sometimes we even see uh, uh, a supply chain for laboratory commodities. So we have multiples, but also we have multiple stakeholders, yeah, who are interested in one way or another. Uh, in the health supply chain, including suppliers, but also the healthcare providers or say healthcare organizations, the government funders, uh, the community, or we say the people, the patient themselves. So we have multiple stakeholders and they also have a different interest. Yeah, their goals are quite different. For example, uh, when a person goes to a health uh, facility, their expectation is to be satisfied with their with the sepsis, they want to get cured. That once they are cured or their health status changes, then they get satisfied, satisfied because that is what they expected. Okay, but when we talk about uh, from the provider side, it is also different. At some point, they want to minimize the cost. So, given that we have multiple stakeholders, at some point we might have what are called goal conflicts, and for that case, if we are not finding a way to make sure that. Uh, uh, we are actually meeting the expectations of the different stakeholders, then we will not be able to achieve what, uh, what we want. So also these uh, healthcare uh, supply systems, they're also designed uh, for different purposes, as I've said. Yeah, and uh, what we can see is that none of them has complete data. Yeah, you can find that you have this system which provides a certain type of data. You have another system which provides an, uh, another type of data. For example, we have the health management information systems. And when you go to the health facilities, basically they talk more about the clinicals, but we also have our logistics management information systems. They are mainly talking about the logistics aspects, the stocks and all these flows of materials. But Rarely we can get a system which in Compass is very comprehensive of all the important data that we have. So we say, yes, we have multiple systems, but uh, it's like almost all of them, they depend on another system. That none is a complete set of the data that we have. But when you come to Africa now, apart from just having uh, uh, these multiple systems and many stakeholders, but we're also having challenges in terms of the data 
quality. And here we are talking about uh, completeness of the data, but also consistency in terms of uh, a collection, in terms of uh, availability, in terms of uh, sharing, you know, consistency in terms of even the type of data that is being collected. So at some point, yes, we have systems which capture data, we have systems which collect data, but we come to realize that there has to be a means which will help us to, uh, to, to come up with meaningful uh, knowledge out of all this data we are collecting. So when we are, we are looking at this um, uh, healthcare supply chain as a very complex, uh, as a very complex one, we realize that without introducing analytics, without introducing a way where we can have uh, uh, we can aggregate the data and at the same time we can change them in a manner that we can get meaning then we are actually going to miss uh what was the intended uh, uh purpose of having all these kind of uh, 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 uh of uh, uh of information systems so what i'm trying to argue here is that uh, yes uh, in Africa, now we have installed so many systems, yeah, which are actually either adding value to the healthcare supply chain indirectly, but we also have uh, uh, logistics management information systems, which are actually feeding our supply chains, and we have a lot of data. Currently, we have a lot of data, but we are no longer shortage of data. Data is there, but maybe our problem is the quality of data. But then the next challenge is that making use of this data. So having this complexity, then it is important to see how now can we aggregate data and then how can we transform this data into a meaningful, a meaningful uh, 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 information or meaningful knowledge or meaningful patterns. Yeah. So in the process of transformation, basically, we believe that given that we have multiple systems which are also supporting the supply chains, then it's very important that we have data which will be transformed, which will be standardized, which will be, uh, will be uh, 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 we can say, formatted in a manner that we can make a useful uh, meaning out of it. So based on that, we can say that we can never ignore the issue of data analysis or data analytics if we want to see our health uh, care supply chains actually addressing the errors that we are interested to see being achieved. Next. So what is data analytics? You can try to type. Yeah, just type even a sentence in the chat box. What do you think is data analytics? Just one second. What do you think is data analytics? Any, anybody who understands what is data analytics? Yeah, you can use your chat box. Okay, so ideally when we talk about uh, uh, data analytics, yeah, someone says this is about getting insight out of data. One said it's about looking at data. Yeah, so there are different meanings, but what we are trying to say here is that uh, when we talk about data analytics, uh, the formal definition by the National Institute of Standards is that this is a discovery of meaningful patterns in data, discovery. So it's very important to understand that there is something hidden inside the data, something which is very meaningful. It is actually hidden inside the data. So we need to make sure that we get that meaning. Yeah, we get that particular meaning. So that process of getting the meaning out of the data is what we can say, that is what is data analytics, that we want to reveal, we want to discover what has been, uh, has been, uh, has been hidden. Yeah, and that is what we can use uh, to make the right decisions as far as uh, improving our supply chains. So this is uh, uh, data, uh, data analytics, basically is one of the steps uh, in the data life cycle, yeah, because the data life cycle includes collection of data. You need to have that data, yeah, but preparation of information out of the data, yeah, and then analysis of that data in a manner that you can be able to synthesize uh, knowledge. You can have the meanings, okay? And then we go beyond that. We want to take actions out of the meaning that we have observed 
we have been able uh, to discover from the provided data. So when we talk about data collection, basically it's about the different methods, the different tools that you can use in your data collection. But at the same time, we say you can have, we have multiple systems. So at the end of the day, we will want to extract all the relevant data from the different systems that we have. So we need to create a sort of a database, a relevant database that we think we really uh, in, uh, we really uh, inform uh, the development or changes or improvement in our health supply chain. For that case, maybe we need to extract data from the health management information systems. We need to extract data maybe from the, uh, uh, the DHS. So from the different sources that we have, we need to extract the relevant data and then come up with a database. So then we say that is not enough. You cannot make any meaning. Then you need to transform that one. Yeah. For example, yeah, you can have uh, different systems can be capturing data for different purposes. So even the way that has been coded could be different. For example, if we want to understand the gender, for example, of the patient. Yeah, if you go maybe to a health management information system, they might call it as M, male, female, that you really see the narrative male, female. But in other systems, you can see they are being coded as one, two. So at the end of the day, we say, if we don't have a common understanding, then we will not be able to make any use of that particular data. So we will need to transform the data. So even if we talk about uh, the medicines, let's say, Maybe in some system, they might record them using generic names, but in some system, maybe they use the brand names and all these kind of things. Yeah, if you talk about a uh, stock, yeah, in some system, they might stock it, you know, the record might be uh, in terms of uh, uh, maybe cartons. Yeah, these are cartons of this type of medicine, but in other systems, they might be in terms of boxes and so forth. So at the end of the day, we say after we extract, yes, but we really need to make sure that the metrics, yeah, the measurement in that particular data is actually aligned. So we need to do the transformation. We need to do the cleaning and all these kind of things. But also next is to do the statistical analysis. So here is where we are going to see how we can get the statistical meaning out of the data. So sometimes, depending on the objective that we have, we can have uh, a data that require really uh, 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 very advanced statistical processes, but we can also have data which really does not require such, uh, we can have analysis which does not require such advanced uh, analysis. So we will need to make a choice. Yeah, also it also depends on the uh, capacity. Yeah, what I will argue is that every, every institution, every supply chain manager, every supply chain practitioner can always do an analysis, but the extent of analysis will actually differ, but we can all do some analysis, some synthesis out of uh, 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 the data that we have collected. Then we do the interpretation of what we find. Yeah, when we talk about interpretation is that it's just not enough to say the average consumption is uh, 20 or the stock level is 20. We need to know more. We need to beef more. So that's where we can have a proper interpretation of the statistical parameter that we see. Because if we analyze and we just see average, it might not tell us so much. But we would like to understand what does, re does it really mean as far as our, uh, our, our problem that we want to address is our concern. Next. So also, if we talk about uh, analytics, we need to understand that uh, we have different types of data. And I really need to, uh, to, uh, to encourage our supply chain managers because uh, given the objectivity of quantitative data, it looks like we are so much inclined to the quantitative uh, data collection and even some analysis, but that is not the case with the qualitative, okay? So usually we have the qualitative and we also have the quantitative data that we can use uh, in our analysis. What is also very important is to understand uh, the quantitative or the nature of the data that we have, that whether it is a nominal data, whether it is ordinal, whether it is an interval data, or it is a racial data, why do we need to understand these characteristics of data is because even the analysis will depend 
on these characteristics of the data that you want to collect. Next. So we have different sources of data. Yeah, we know we have different systems in our supply chains. Yeah, EDIs, we have the barcoding and all these uh, logistics management systems, but also the health management information systems. So depending on what we want to address, we might be required to access different sources of our supply chain data. Next. So I would like also to take you through uh, some, uh, 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 what are the common, I can say, common types of data analytics. Generally, we have what is called a descriptive data analysis. And this is like a, 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 a very, a normal, a very common one that everyone should be able to do it. And here it's just that we want just to get an insight about the past, you know, like what has happened, you know, so you can use historical data, get average to understand what happened in the past. So the main question is what has happened? So if we have a supply chain, in our supply chains, we should al always know what question do we want to answer. If the question is what is, has happened with our supply chain, then maybe the descriptive can also be enough to explain what has happened. But also we say there's what is called the diagnostic. Yeah, that is you go beyond what has happened. So you try to look in-depthly and try to explain the causes. You know, whatever you observed from the descriptive uh, analysis, you try to go deeper and try to establish what could have contributed to what you have observed through the descriptive analysis. So you go inside, trying to look on the relationship between different factors, which might explain what you observe from the descriptive statistics. So we say you can use what is called a fishbone tool. Yeah, and here you sit with experts in a particular area. Yeah, and I will encourage that sometimes we should also include uh, the health professionals. For example, if you are in a healthcare facility, include the health professionals, sit as experts, because if we want to understand the reasons from what we are observing, it's not always easy for everyone to be full of all the information. So we would wish to have it more engaging. So that is what is called the diagnostic. But we can also have what is called a predictive analysis. And here, our main question is that we want to understand the future. We want to predict about the future because we have observed, let's say, some rapid changes. So we want to know what is it that will happen in the future. And here we are talking about using data, you that you employ data in statistical models and forecasting techniques, you know, for you to be able to understand uh, the future. But also we have what are called prescriptive data analysis. And here we are talking about the question is like, if in your supply chain, you have this question, what should we do? That is you are observing a certain phenomena and you are somewhere stuck like, what should you do? So we say you can also uh, use the data. Data can do the analysis and you can be able to prescribe, you know, what should be done. Yeah, and here we're talking about optimization and simulation uh, methodologies, which will help us, you know, like you optimize or you simulate a future, a, a future scenario for you to be able to see what will be the possible outcomes. And this one is very important if we are looking into, uh, uh, let's say we have supply chain interventions that we want to deploy. So we want to know, you know, what should we do among them? So that is, uh, these are some of the uh, 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 techniques that we can use uh, in that manner. So these are common uh, data analytics, or we can say common methods or common categories that we can employ in our supply chain. And they will answer the different questions that we have in our supply chains. Next. So this is a roadmap. If we want to do a uh, data, uh, data analysis, yeah, this is our roadmap is sort of a summary of eight steps. So the first step that is very important is below here, step number one is problem identification. It is very important you have that question. What is the key question in your supply chain? For example, 
I have observed in my country that is we have uh, uh, we have a serious problem of uh, expiries. That is, medical commodities are expiring. So I have this key question: Why? Why are the medical commodities are expiring? While we have different reforms, we have different interventions. So I have my question. I have a problem that is medical commodities expiry and my question is that i want to understand what could have been the factors what is it that is contributing to this uh, uh medical commodities expiry but then i ask myself is this a relevant is this a significant pro uh, problem to whom so i should you should be able to understand who be the stakeholders who are interested with this? So I know the government is spending a lot of money in this, but I also know that there are other stakeholders in the health supply chain, maybe funders, but even the managers, because it's not very uh, uh, motivating when you are the manager and you have huge stocks of expiry uh, medical commodities. So I think this is some, this is a problem and it is of interest uh, to these kind of stakeholders. So the first thing that we have to know is what is the problem that we want to, uh, to address in our supply chain. Then next is to understand the step number two. After seeing the problem, you should be able to see what kind of data do you need? What kind of data do we need? Yeah, that is we are talking about uh, expiry. What kind of data do we need? Eh? Yes, you need stock level. You need to know when was it replenished. You need to know the lead times. You need to know a lot of data. So I need to get all the data that I think will be relevant to explain, you know, why I'm observing this uh, 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 expert. But when you're thinking about the data, also think who will be the person to provide the data. Where will you get the data? Is there a data warehouse in, your, in the supply chain? But where can we get the data? So where is the source of this particular data? So it is very important that is we plan properly. Yeah, and when we identify the type of data, we also plan on how we can get this particular data. The third step will be to retrieve or to collect this particular data. So you can use different tools. Yeah, you can retrieve them from the existing systems that you have uh, uh, the health management information systems, you have logistics management information systems, different systems that you have identified in step two. And then you can also maybe you need some primal data. You need new data to collect to explain your phenomena. So you need maybe to choose a certain method. Do I need to do an observation on how the stock move? Do I need to do a survey maybe of the uh, uh, warehouse uh, uh, officers? Or what do I need to do a case study, go in depth to understand? So all in all, it depends on what is your question. So for example, if my question is, what are the factors contributing to, yeah? And I know, I don't know about this factor. There's no data to explain these factors. Then maybe I'll need to do a case study so that I can be able to probe and establish these factors. But sometimes from the literature, from the theory, we know the factors. So we will need to do what? We will need to, uh, to collect the data based on the factors that we have identified and continue with that. Then the Sorry, next Gladness, step, that uh, is step gonna... number four, Sorry, Gladness, I think we're going to have to pause you there. We're already well over time on this. <laughs> so I, I think we're going to have to pause there and give the, the second speaker a chance. Um, yes, we, we, you're going to be you're going to be just one speaker on the seminar. I, I think we'll postpone my speech until the next session. But I, I think we should give Philip a chance to speak and then we'll look if we can do more from there. Yep. All right. Uh, thank you, Prof, uh, for that. Thank you. I'm sorry uh, to interrupt, Gladness. Uh, it's just that we we are very very tight on time on this on this webinar. Yes, I understand this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Gladness, for this uh, very powerful presentation. I was going through the the comment session and I saw that a couple of persons were saying impactful, very insightful. Uh, they would like to share share. I um, would like you to share the the slides. So the slides will be. We shared with every one of us uh, who participated in today's webinar. And if you have any specific question for Dr. Gladness, kindly put it inside the 
comment session it's in the chat box we will attend to it at the end of the of the presentations um now we'll quickly run into the next presentation and see how much we can take uh in the next 10 to 15 minutes uh pharmacist philip is the warehousing manager for chemonics international nigeria he he throughout his career he has helped various pivotal roles including supply chain information system advisor malaria advisor a uh, responsible pharmacist at a distribution center, amongst others. With his multifaceted expertise and comprehensive set skill sets, Philip has consistently delivered exceptional results in his professional endeavors. He is a highly accomplished professional with a diverse educational background and extensive experience in business administration, supply chain management, and pharmacy. He possesses a master's degree in business administration with a specialization in finance and investment from Amadou Bello University in Nigeria and a bachelor's degree in pharmacy from the prestigious University of Jos. Alongside his educational qualification, he holds uh, supply chain related certifications such as the CSPS from APICS and the CLTPTD. So I give the floor to pharmacist Philip now, the warehousing manager for Chemonix uh, International in Nigeria to take us through the use of data in implementing the six, the rights of logistics. Thank you, Philip, it's over to you. Yes, thank you very much to me. And then good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone from wherever you are. As he mentioned, my name is Philip. I'll be taking us through the use of data to implement the rights of um, logistics. Next slide, please. Um, since we are time, we are pressed for time, I'll be um, I'll try to keep it as snappy as possible. We all know the rights of logistics, and we know that um, when it gets to the point where the rubber hits the road in the supply chain, you will be talking of logistics at that instance. And you know, the significance of every program is that there is a product that must be delivered and it's logistics that ensures that um, this will happen. So with this, now what, what are the basic importance of um, logistics, of the rights of logistics? So the rights of logistics basically guides and shape all the logistics operation that we do. Without logistic, without the rights of logistics, then it's basically there is nothing to do in the supply chain because there is a service you need to meet or there is a product you need to add, uh, move to a, a specific location or move to an individual in a place. So next slide, please. Yeah, with the rights of logistics, all your activities are guided and then you know ahead, this is what you want to achieve. And then the supply chain knows what it needs to deliver. Next slide. So what is the importance of um, data in logistics? The, the former speaker has already mentioned a lot of importance of data in supply chain. Same thing to applies to logistics. So it enables you to make decision, make optimization decision when and where necessary. Instead of just running around making decisions, doing this kind of selective optimization, with the data, you can do a holistic optimization of your entire system, and then you'll be able to profile insight into what is happening, and then also profile solution into the best way to solve um, the situation, the solution. I saw one of our um, one of our participants mentioning in the chat box that um, they have instances of product expiring due to prolonged transportation. When you have a data-driven tracking, when you have a data tracking system, right, it tells you, it enables you to know. It gives you insight into what is happening in your logistics system. You get to know how long your product are staying, and then you get to know, am I moving a short data product? If I'm moving a short data product, will it get expired before it gets to the destination where it will be used and all those things? And then you're not talking about accuracy of um, demand forecasting using data analytics. It also helps organization to plan inventory better. And then also, you know the transportation requirement ahead of you moving the product. For example, maybe you have um, um, a 40-ton truck that has a capacity of about seven cubic meter, and then the product you need to move is about um, eight cubic meter. With the data ahead, you know that this, this product will not be able to fit into that particular truck, and then you may need to get um, another truck to be able to contain the products that you need to move around. 
Next slide, please. So now, what are the rights of logistics? Some people will say there are six rights of logistics, some will say there are several rights of logistics, but mind you, the customer is always important in the logistics system or in every supply chain. If you are giving the products to a customer and the customer is not the right customer, then you have practically done nothing. So the rights of logistics are just basically, let me just refresh our memories. They are getting the right product in the right quantity, in the right condition, to the right place, at the right time, at the right to the right customer, at the right price. So if you end up giving the product that you're supposed to spend them, let's say um, $1, in your cost of distribution and you ended up spending $5, the price is no longer right. And then your logistic system will be seen as being inefficient. Next slide, please. Yeah, so we'll start with um, the first set of um, the right start. So how do we use data to get the right product? With data, our demand forecasting will be better be able to know ahead this this okay this product is not needed the consumption for this product is reducing do we need to phase out this product do we need to replace it with another product once we have this data our demand forecasting is going to be accurate and then it is going to reduce our um, wastage in our system likewise for inventory management if we have if we have accurate data with accurate data you should be able to plan the right quantity you need in your inventory for your, for your inventory management and activities. For example, if I have a warehouse that is about 1,000 pallet capacity and I'm bringing a product that is about 1,200 pallet capacity, and it means I'm going to be having challenges in my in managing my inventory because I'll be having product that will have nowhere to um, um, and be stored. And then in order fulfillment also, maybe a customer needs um, a specific brand of um, a product. If you don't know the particular brand that this customer needs, then you end up supplying the wrong brand of a product. And then in the, maybe in the wrong quantity too, maybe it needs five units of a product and then you are supplying three units of that product. So knowing, using data, you get to know the exact quantity and then the type of product the customer want, and then you'll be able to meet the customer's requirement. And then product data accuracy. The product data accuracy is very crucial for logistics operation. We have seen instances where a customer is requesting for product A and then ends up, ends up being supplied with product B. With the right data, with data, you get to know exactly what you are supplying to a customer and then you also, what a customer needs and then the exact thing you are also going to supply to a customer. And then with real time tracking of products, you'll be able to know how you'll be able to have a system that is set up to identify products real time and then you and reduces the um, ambiguity in product identification because we have instances, for example, we have instances where the same product may have different way of being described. And then if you are treating product at generic level, it's easier to manage. But if you are treating product at manufacturer specific level, then it means you need to have accurate um, way of tracking this product and then getting the right product information across. Next slide, please. So we can also ensure the right condition with data. With data, health product, as we all know, contains active pharmaceutical ingredients. And then these active pharmaceutical ingredients are the things that are necessary for making the products what they are. And they are also classified as temperature and time sensitive, which means they have expiry date. And then if you subject them to the temperature storage that is outside what the manufacturer is recommended, then there is every possibility that the nature of the product will change. So with data-driven system, right, you'll be able to monitor and track product and then ensuring that the product are stored in the right condition, right, the right quality control measures are implemented. Then you can also manage your suppliers, help them to provide feedback to them, right? You get real-time alerts when you have temperatures going outside the required storage drain. Maybe you'll see your, 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 your chillers in your freezers are failing with, uh, with systems that send you feedback. You will also get to know when your chillers are failing and then look for the necessary, um, put in place the necessary intervention to correct the challenge. Next slide, please. So we all know that giving the product to the right customer, right, 
at the right time, at the right place is very important. If a customer needs um, um, a product right now and you are delivering it maybe tomorrow, then it means you, there's every tendency that the customer will not need it by that time because that need as at that instant might have passed. Maybe somebody that needs to take a drug that is scheduled to take to be taken um, at a specific time and the person don't get to take that drug. And it means the efficacy of the drug will be affected. So with data, you will be able to make a lot of decisions such as accurate time and timely delivery, maybe delivery to the right location. That's if you have a location management system, right? That way you'll be able to track and then make delivery um, to the right location. And then your operations will be basically demand driven. If a customer does not need, if a customer needs a particular product and it states the time he needs it, with this data, you'll be able to make sure you put all the necessary things in place to meet up the expectations from your um, logistics system. Next slide, please. So cost, as we all know, is um, very crucial in our logistics system, especially in the health sector where you have um, uh, donors donating and money, and this money is kind of limited. You may not be able to meet the need. So you will need to make the best out of the little you have. So optimizing cost with data is very important in the health sector. So as to be able to meet, at least use a little money to, meet, to, do, to, to get more coverage. So with data analysis, you'll be able to analyze your cost and then optimize your logistics operation. Next slide, please. So in conclusion, data-driven decision is very essential for successful implementation of the rights of logistics. Reason being that it enhances accuracy, improves efficiency, and then enable proactive problem solving. It will, it will make you to avoid a situation where you can predict ahead, I'm going to have this problem the next day, and then you provide a solution to that problem ahead, and then your systems don't end up breaking um, over. I think um, at this point, I just have to call it a day and then end the presentation here. Thank you very much. Yeah, over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Pharmacist Philip, for, for this uh, very well-crafted presentation. Thank you for linking, uh, linking everything from where, where Dr. Gladness talked. Uh, we have seen the importance of data the importance of analytics and how it applies to the to the work that we do in supply chain uh, as philip mentioned it is where the rubber hits the road um, converting the data and the analytics into service that we are delivering to the to the people that we serve thank you very much thank you dr gladness thank you pharmacist philip for the presentation unfortunately we cannot take the presentation from professor andy professor andy you have to pardon us uh, the presentation seems very uh, engaging and then uh, maybe in future we'll just plan for two presentation or one instead of having three thank you for for your understanding so no it, it is now time for questions and answers. Uh, I have seen a couple of questions on the chat box already. Uh, a couple of persons have asked if we will share the slide. I have mentioned that the slides will be shared. Uh, there will be a certificate after the uh, after this presentation. There will also we, we also have questions around uh, whether we have a French version of this presentation. Uh, We'll work with the Empower team to see if this is possible and then eventually reach out to, to us. Uh, apologies, uh, we may not be able to take so much of uh, 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 voice questions. Uh, I can see some love com coming from there. Uh, Momin Yaro, I'll just give room for Momin Yaro to just speak and ask one question in 30 seconds then we attempt to answer the question. Mumin. Mumin. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Uh, Mumin here from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, my question goes to uh, Dr. Gladness Salima. Um, as a public health professional, um, I've seen uh, in, in many countries, uh, inconsistency in using census for programmatic 
you know, uh, planification, forecast, and um, other uh, elements. And the result of that, uh, in most of the cases, countries end with too much inventory and uh, the experience expiry of medicines in most of the cases. And which is due basically by the situation where at the country level, they are using the official census to apply for, you know, donated medicines. And uh, we, we are the donors. So we use the data to, to donate medicines. But when we go to the countries, we see that uh, at the last mile, at the community level, uh, people are using the head count, which is completely different from the official census. But the program that they have, they say they have to use the national census because it's a, you know, it's a public uh, uh, program. How do you address this, uh, this issue in terms of data, quality of data? Thank you, uh, Momin. Uh, Dr. Gladness, uh, I'm sure you, you want to respond to this. Yeah, I think I can say something. But yeah. what I think is that uh, what is very important is that uh, when we get the data, we must understand what was the background, what was the history of that data. So there are a lot of challenges when you are using secondary data, that, that data which has already been collected. So at the end of the day, you must understand how it ended there. So it might have been aggregated. So at the national level, you can see aggregates. But if we don't understand how that one arrived, then it is also a very, very big challenge. So I would say for programming, I think it's very important that we should understand uh, what do we want to address and make sure that we are using the right measurement. Because given the different sources, they will differ. But at the end of the day, we want to transform what we are getting, for example, from the secondary data or from the secondary databases uh, and have it in a standardized manner. You know, the measurements should be standardized so that you don't have this, uh, 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 because if you keep the inconsistency, then definitely you end up with the wrong, uh, wrong analysis and wrong interpretation. So that's why we say whatever data that you are getting from whatever source, you have to sit down, understand the data, the measurements, you know, how it was measured and see if it reflects what you want and then look for the possibility to transform that particular data. So transformation is very important. Thank you. Before we do the analysis, yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Gladness. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, just an addition to or uh, an information to the questions that are sent on the on the chat box. We will aggregate all the questions and attend attempt to all of them and share alongside with the slides. So. Pardon us if you cannot take all of the questions at this moment. I have a question from Madzima. What are the what can be done about the problems of data, as had been mentioned by Dr. Gladness? And what is the major difference between diagnostic and prescriptive uh, analytics? I am sure that uh, Dr. Gladness had it as part of, of our slides. But because we had to stop in between, uh, she couldn't address it. Dr. Gladness, do you want to talk to to these questions? What are the what can be done about the problems, and what are the major differences between uh, diagnostics and prescriptive analytics? Sorry, I didn't get what problems. Okay, so at the middle, at the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned uh, some things around the problems of data, incomplete data, consistency, and all of that, okay. and especially mm. Africa. So mm. uh, a question came that what are the, what can be done about the problems, and uh -huh. what is the difference between diagnostic and prescriptive mm. analytics? Okay, okay. So ideally. Uh, when we say what can be done, basically it's about systems improvement. That is, we must uh, make sure that uh, we improve uh, our, our, our data systems. Yeah, We improve the data systems in terms of the infrastructure. 
but at the same time we have to look at on the uh the personnel yeah you know these are the people who are going to work with these systems so we need to personnel with uh, uh the personnel with the right uh, qualities right capacity yeah to be able to uh to make sure that we are getting data of the good quality but also we need to have what i can say organizational readiness in terms of uh, uh like organizations themselves like health facilities or suppliers whoever that is engaged in a supply chain they need to have this uh enthusiasm of making sure that they are improving their data. So the organizational readiness in terms of commitment, in terms of behavior, but also the financial readiness that they should be uh, ready to invest in improving the situation. And we also need top management support. That is uh, the top management should see that the issue of data is not something that one can play around. So if we look at it from the organizational perspective, but also from the environmental perspective, where, for example, for the public sector, yeah, even the government itself should be uh, should see it that way. That is, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, continue with having uh, data of bad quality. So investment, but also monitoring and the governance of the data uh, systems themselves. So a, a number of interventions can be done. You know, we cannot exhaust them in a second. But the uh, idea is that we need to improve. That is the situation. We need to improve. We need to improve the people. We need to improve the uh, the infrastructures, you know, the supply chain connectivities and all these kind of things, you know, so that we can be able to get uh, uh, to have uh, uh, good data. Yeah. So Thank briefly, you. I can say what we need is improvement, you know, like strengthening our supply chains. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gladness. Uh, the last question I'll be able to take today is for Philip. How much is it important to analyze data with program staffs and joint monitoring at the last mile by logistics and program? I, this question is coming from Batarai. Batarai, I'm sure he's talking about uh, collaborative analytics at the last mile between logistics staff and program man uh, management staff. Philip. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there must be that, that there must be a coordination between the both of them, right? Both of them are very essential. The program staff have a lot of information that the logistics staff may not have, right? For example, maybe a program staff um, does not really understand, understands more, um, has more information about a particular product and the requirement. But meanwhile, the logistics staff does not have that um, information. If there is no coordination, then it means there's going to be wastage. I'll give you a practical example. Um, there was this instance where we have um, products in the warehouse that were short dated, right? These products were anti malaria, especially the ones they call AEs, that's the artesanate and water cream combination. So for the logistic people, what we are seeing is that there was a reduced uptake of that product. But meanwhile, the program people were there just um, making the prescription based on their own preferences. But we now decided, okay, let us take up, uh, let us engage the program people to understand why they, why they have these preferences for this. They gave us the reason why they have the preferences for the, for, for the AAs. When we told them, okay, we have these products in our system, how do we how do we increase consumption for this product so that the products don't go to waste? They now came up and told us, okay, for this AA, they discovered that um, the AAs are better tolerated by, um, let's say, um, um, young, younger patients. And then they are going to see how they can drive the consumption by prescribing these products to the younger patients. With this collaboration, the wastage that was supposed to happen was averted. So that collaboration between both logistic people and the program at the last mile is very crucial because the supply chain is supposed to be demand driven. And who are the ones that drive the demand at the last mile? It is the program people. They have the knowledge of the program. They have the knowledge of the, pro, of the, of the patients and they can always come up with instance. They can always look for instances. Thank you, Philip. Uh, I think I lost you. Thank you, but I think you have done justice to the question. Thank you very much. And the, the person who uh, asked the question has responded that he's okay with the explanation. Thank you. So uh, this is where we draw the curtain for the presentation and the questions today. Uh, I want to say thank you very much for participating. 
for all of the questions that you have sent across, they will be attended to and be shared with all of us so that we can collectively uh, learn from whatever answers are provided. Dr. Gladness is currently providing some answers in the chat box. Please feel free to read through them. Uh, the next thing that we'll quickly get done is the second poll. Uh, Sonia, please can you quickly get us through uh, the next uh, few slides and the poll? Okay. I would request, uh, yeah, so everybody can see over here, the poll two has been launched. There are only three questions, so I would request all to please participate in this poll. And also I would request uh, host and backend team to please put the link for uh, downloading the certificate on the chat box so attendees can download their uh, certificate as well. Okay, thank you, Sonia. So the link for your certificate is already in the chat box. You just click and then you can download your customized certificate for participation in this uh, webinar. And also the link for IUPHL uh, chapter, country-wise chapters, uh, the link has been posted on the chat box. So if anybody is interested, uh, they can click on those links. And also to visit Empower School of Health, the Empower website link is also posted on the chat box. So if you're interested for any course, for any uh, anything related to the enrollments, admissions to short and long courses, you can visit our website and you can get connected with us on the pasted email ID. Thank you. We encourage everyone to join the IHPHL uh, at the global platform and then at the chapter level. Uh, it's a collective uh, learning platform of about 8,000 professionals sharing their knowledge uh, across different countries of up to about 150 countries and uh, also continuously engage in more learning and adding value to yourself by, by engaging the Empower School of Health to get your master's degree, diploma's degree in supply chain to enhance the job that you do and serve the people that you serve better. And for Empower courses, we have partial scholarship seats available for the attendees for specifically for today's webinar. So if anybody is interested, please connect uh, with us and we will go through you with the process. Thank you. All right, thank you, Sonia. Thank you very much. Do you still have any other housekeeping from your end? Yeah, uh, that's all. I basically would like really, uh, I appreciate uh, the time which has been spent by all three speakers, uh, Dr. Gladness, uh, Philip and Professor Andy. Uh, we are so sorry that we could not include your presentation for today's, but surely we will organize another one uh, and we will be assigning uh, enough time. So every session will be uh, taking accordingly and uh, also uh, Timmy for, uh, thank you all for your support to make this happen with IAPHL this is our first event together and we will look for uh, more collaboration like this thank you all all right thank, thank you Sonia you. thank you uh, Dr. Gladys thank you pharmacist thank Philip you. thank you also uh, uh, Professor Andy even though we couldn't take your presentation and Sonia we want to say thank you and the Empower team for driving this process we are really happy to continuously uh, work with you uh, to see how we can empower our community to get better uh, with their skills and what they do thank you so much thank you everyone for participating it's, a, it's been a good afternoon with you uh, it's a beautiful sunny day here in Portacot we really have sun but we have sun today I hope you have a sun, some sunlight today in your, in your end. Have a good afternoon. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you, Professor Andy. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.